Good morning, children. It's a Palm Sunday. Good to have you on a Palm Sunday. Shall we pray? Jesus, we thank you for the Palm Sunday. Bless us as we learn your word. Bless our teachers. Bless our parents. Bless everyone. Teach these lessons and write them in the fleshy tables of our hearts. And we'll praise you forevermore. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we shall listen to our friend reciting the memory verse. Osana! Blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. St. John chapter 12, verse 13. Well done. God bless you. Our lesson today is Victory for us. It's a Palm Sunday. Victory for us. Our Bible text is taken from Matthew 21 verses 1 to 11. We'll read a few selected verses. Let's take our Bibles and read Matthew 21 verse 2. Saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied. And they called with her, Loose them, and bring them unto me. Three. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. Eight. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way others cut down branches from the trees and strode them in the way. We shall put our Bibles aside for now. Children, let's watch this clip. Wow, it's a special person in that beautiful car. Oh, I can spot a crown. Yes, look. Yes, it's the queen. Oh, everyone is excited. Everyone wants to have a look at this special person. It's the queen. I saw the crown. Wow, everyone wants to take a picture. Everyone is trying to have a look inside. The queen is passing by. Today, we are learning about the king of kings. We are learning about Jesus passing through, entering the city of Jerusalem on a Palm Sunday. Do you know how it became a Palm Sunday? Let's listen to our Bible story. At this point, Jesus was approaching the city of Jerusalem. He asked two of his disciples to go into the city and they will find a donkey tied. And if the owner asked them why they were untying the donkey, they should say, the Lord is in need of it. Jesus owns the whole world. Isn't it? So all the disciples went and indeed they found the cold tide. They were obedient. We want to be obedient when we are told to do things. So they untied the cold and when the owner asked, they said, the Lord is in need of it. They brought it to Jesus. At this point, Jesus did something unusual. He was to enter the city of Jerusalem riding on a donkey. So the disciples put garments on top of the donkey so that Jesus can sit on it comfortable. As Jesus approached the city of Jerusalem, wow, the crowd they were so excited, children and adults. They were waving palm trees. Everyone wanted to have a look at Jesus. They were waving palm trees. Some couldn't wait. They removed their garments and put them on the pathway Jesus was passing by. They were waving, praising God, shouting, saying, Hosanna. 
Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Rabbi, we have traveled many days to see you. The blessed Jesus, you have saved me. Welcome to our city. Hail hey, Jesus. He raised Lazarus from the dead. <laughs> Listen to the healing of the sick. You have come to deliver us. This is the the Lord. Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. Master, you are the hope of Israel. excited it was the king of kings who had entered the city of Jerusalem children in our story lesson Shandi says it he wished it. he was there when Jesus entered Jerusalem it was an exciting moment Christy agreed with Shandi and said she would have taken all her mom's pink roses and tossed them in front of Jesus. Kevin said he would have even taken his Nike jacket and put it in front for Jesus to pass through. Wow, it was on a Palm Sunday. That's why we celebrate Palm Sunday. Jesus loves us so much. Everyone was giving praise. Everyone was waving palm branches. We can see how excited people were during that time. Jesus had done wonderful things. Today, we cannot see Jesus. However, by faith, Jesus is with us all the time. We need to praise him anyway, everywhere, all the time. Jesus will hear our praise just as he heard them during that time he entered the city of Jerusalem. When we sing songs, we are praising Jesus. We need to praise Jesus all the time. We need to thank him for all what he is doing. I'm sure most of you, even at meal time, you do thank God for that meal. Jesus is our all in all. We can praise him anyway. Anyhow, he is around us. When we were sick, Jesus healed us. Isn't that a reason to praise him? During this time of COVID, Jesus has protected us. Isn't that time to praise him? We can pray, praise Jesus by singing songs, singing our choruses. We can pray to Jesus. It is a way of praising him. When we talk to him in prayer, he hears us. We can invite our friends so that they can also know God. That is a way of praising Jesus. That is a way of praising God. Children, anytime, anyway, we need to praise Jesus all the time. When we invite Jesus to come into our life, to come into our heart, it will be easy to praise him. So we want Jesus to come 
into our heart, wash away with his blood all those naughty things, all those lies. It will be easy to praise him. It will just be automatic to praise Jesus all the time. Anyway, as we grow up in the playground, at school, at home, with our friends, we will praise Jesus all the time. Our key statement reads, I will praise God all the time. I will praise God all the time. Activities for ages two to five is a picture given. Rearrange it in correct order according to our today's lesson. It's actually a summary of our today's lesson. Activities for ages six to eight is about on the road. The instructions is shown. Next week's lesson is lesson 7E, an empty tomb. That's the end of our lesson. God bless you. Bye. <laughs>Good morning children and welcome to your answer class. The title of our lesson today is White Water. I really hope you enjoy. For our text this morning we have about three places to read. We have Psalm 121 verse 1 and 2 and we have Matthew chapter 14 verse 22 to 33 and we have another one from Luke, but we are only going to focus this morning on the one from Matthew chapter 14. And we're starting from verse 25. 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying... It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. 27. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. 29. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. 30. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? 32. And when they were come into the ship, the, sh the wind ceased. 33. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Wow. We thank God for that. That really shows that when Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk on water. But when he got distracted, whoa, he started to sink. For our memory verse this morning, we have an amazing verse. It says, turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in thy way. Psalm 119 verse 37. Right, for an object lesson for what we have this morning, I've brought a comic and a novel. In itself, they're not sinful. But if this is all you spend your time reading and you have no time to read your Bible or your devotionals or something inspiring that will make you spiritually strong, then definitely your eyes will be making you spiritually lean. So please, in itself, they're not sinful, but you can't just do this all the time. Yep. Yeah? Right, this is a recap of the story and I just want us to remember what happened. You know, it's a funny thing 
they were all was going well unto Danny on the water while he was paddling got distracted by an eagle and in that split second the boat capsized and they saw white water as you can see now he learned a lesson that day <laughs> he said he should have kept his eyes on the river and we too we must focus on Jesus in life if we focus on Jesus we're sure to be able to make it right just to bring the lesson to life we have two pictures here so which picture would you love to look at this beautiful creation of God the mountain a lovely landscape or garbage I mean with our eyes I can tell you this will be a delight but this one won't so literally our eyes are like cameras you know this phone has a camera on it all right and I can use it to take pictures you know of all the beautiful things in the world I can also use it to take pictures of garbage but what's the choice our eyes are like cameras and if we want to see the beautiful pictures we have to focus our cameras on the beautiful things of life on the beautiful things of God like our Bible his word his wonderful creation and Jesus the thing about it is that we have a choice we can choose what to focus on it's my prayer and it's our prayer this morning that you will focus on the things of God. Right, this is the time for our question and I've chosen just one question to make us think. What are some of the things that can, you know, take away our attention from the Lord? I have an encapsulating answer because there's so many things out there that will not make you focus on God. But this is the one that has helped me all through the years. Anything that I'm going to look at, it could be on my phone, it could be on the internet, it could be on the advertisement boards around, it could be in the library. If Jesus was looking at it with me and could not smile or would not be happy, I wouldn't be wasting my time looking at that thing. So make that your watchword. Right, to summarize the lesson, there are many things around us that are not things that would inspire our eyes, like people doing violent things, indecent pictures, name it. People doing wrong things, using bad language in school, bad examples, negative peer pressure from our friends we don't want to focus on those things they're not going to do us any good what we want which summarizes from this lesson is that we want to make sure we focus on things that make god happy his word jesus the wonderful creation that he's created inspiring things uplifting things things that will make your heart tuned to heaven. That's where we want our focus to be. And if that's where our focus is, we should be fine. Because remember, your eyes are the gateway to your heart. And if you let anything that is bad in, it will affect your heart. The statement for this week is also powerful. I will always keep my eyes on Jesus. I hope that will be your watchword going through this week. Now, for our activity for this week, we have an eye chart. If you've ever been to the opticians before, you would know that they always tell you to read something. Now, these ones actually have a code. So I want you to use this chart below to find out the mystery verse below. I hope you will enjoy that. And finally, next week's lesson is going to be another amazing one. It has to do with our will. You know, all this quarter has to do with it's all yours, Lord. But this one is going to be on our will. I just pray that God will use it to bless you. Now, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the primary power lesson. We thank you so much for the answer lesson. We just pray that you plant these lessons 
in our heart. Your word says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Help us to keep your word in our heart so that we will be pleasing to you all the days of our lives. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a nice week. Bye.